Welcome to the Dairy News and Views podcast, a production of the Iowa State University Extension and Outreach Dairy Team. Our podcast covers current educational, research, and industry tools available for your operation to manage healthy cows and calves while producing the highest quality dairy products. Well, thanks for joining us today on Dairy News and Views from the ISU Dairy Team. I'm Jen Bentley, Northeast Iowa Dairy Field Specialist, and I'm here today with my dairy colleague, Fred Hall, Northwest Iowa Dairy Field Specialist, as we discuss today's topic of protecting farm workers during the hot days of summer. So welcome back to the podcast, Fred. Well, thank you, Jen. I walked in from outside a minute ago. Uh, We're already close to that 90 degrees. So I think it's the right time to start talking about protecting folks from heat. So today we're pleased to have on our podcast, Melissa O'Rourke. While Melissa's role with Iowa State University Extension and Outreach is a farm and agribusiness management specialist, she's also a vital dairy team member helping to provide education in ag law, employment legal issues, land and related leasing issues, and estate and succession planning. With employee management being an important topic to the dairy industry, Melissa also wrote a chapter in the large dairy herd management titled Building the Team, Continuous Recruitment, Selection, and Onboarding. So welcome to our podcast, Melissa. Well, thank you, Jen and Fred. It's good to be with both of you. Yeah, and like Fred mentioned, the heat is on. And so every year as we move into the summer, sometimes we often seem maybe a little unprepared for the inedible warm days and humid days that are coming up, aren't we? Well, that's true, Jen. And uh, we always know it's coming and that our producers and employees will be working in these conditions. And we know this can start in June and continue into September, but we often seem surprised when the hot days get here. Yeah, in our conversation earlier, Melissa, we were talking about, you know, just last week we had 34 degrees as our low temps, and now we're coming in into some really hot days. That's right. That's right. So, you know, and, and of course, we, we first often think about protecting our dairy cattle during these hot days. That's a very, very vital, of course. But today, we want to remind everyone that we need to be conscious of how to protect ourselves and our dairy farm workers during these kinds of stressful weather conditions. Yeah, great topic and something I think we need to look further into. So how serious of a problem can the hot weather be on our dairy farms? That's a good question, Jen. We often think the heat is just uncomfortable, and it is, uh, but heat can cause illness and sometimes even death. And that's a terrible thing to think that not being prepared for the heat could cause someone's death. Overall, the Centers for Disease Control report that on average, over 700 people in the U.S. die from heat-related causes each year. And these deaths are mostly preventable. And that's why we need to talk about it. We don't want this occurring illness or death on our dairy farms due to heat. We know exactly when we want to start preparing the barn and comforting the cows, uh, whether it's fans or, or water. Where should our dairy producers go to start learning about how to prevent heat related illness for people? All right. Well, Fred, most of us are generally familiar with OSHA. Uh, We've heard of OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, and OSHA has been on this topic for a number of years now, Uh, became much, much more conscious of it. Several years ago, OSHA established a heat illness prevention campaign to raise awareness and provide education and resources for farm employers and employees. And I'll share a link later in our podcast, but your listeners should know that we'll also have an updated fact sheet on the ISU Ag Decision Maker website, and that will have links to OSHA and to other resources. Melissa, how should we think about heat on our dairy farm? Well, we know, Fred, that on some of our modern dairy farm operations, many employees work in conditions where there is shade, there's ventilation, perhaps even air conditioning at times. Those things can be regularly provided. But 
Nevertheless, during hot and humid weather, dairy workers move in and out of these conditions that can cause heat illness if the conditions are not monitored. So think about activities like feeding calves, moving cows, uh, participating in hay and silage chopping operations. All of these kinds of activities can require physical labor where risks of heat illness can exist in the right conditions. Aren't most dairy workers used to these changing temperature conditions? Well, Fred, that's another good question, and you would think so, but we need to remember that many of today's farm employees might be lacking in previous farm or other outdoor employment experience. Uh, we know that in human resource management that uh, our farm employees are coming from all kinds of backgrounds now. So dealing with weather related conditions may be new to them, not to mention the difference among individuals who may or may not be acclimatized to high heat conditions. And we need to remember that particular employees, such as perhaps older workers, maybe those who are overweight or have some heart-related medical conditions, they might have an even lower than average tolerance or a higher sensitivity to heat, and they might require additional monitoring. So Melissa, how do dairy farm workers get overheated? Well, in general, dairy farm workers, all farm workers can become overheated in one of two ways. Either the heat from the environmental conditions in which they're working or by an individual doing the kind of work, the kind of physical labor that generates a lot of internal heat. And can you describe some of these heat related illnesses? Sure. Less serious forms of heat-related illness would be something like heat exhaustion, perhaps fainting, getting heat cramps, or maybe a heat rash. None of those are pleasant, not as serious as some other things. These conditions, though, they should be taken seriously as they can quickly escalate and progress to heat stroke. When we move into heat stroke, that can cause death or permanent disability. Heat stroke occurs when the body becomes unable to control its internal temperature. Uh, the body temperature rises rapidly. The sweating mechanism in our body fails and the body is unable to cool down. The body temperature can quickly rise to like 106 degrees or higher. So when we're working with our dairy farm workers or our farm families, um, what would be some of those symptoms of a heat stroke that we should be aware of? Good questions. Things to watch for either as we're monitoring one another or monitoring ourselves. Symptoms could include hot, dry skin or Profuse sweating. Uh, some people have hallucinations or they might have chills, a throbbing headache, high body temperature, confusion or dizziness, and perhaps slurred speech. That slurred speech is something that, again, that individual themselves might not be aware of, but that's why it's important for us to monitor one another. Melissa, if those kinds of symptoms are seen, what should be done in the way of first aid? Good question, Fred. And again, we're talking about those symptoms, which can be symptoms of heat stroke. The first thing to do is call 911. Then, while waiting for emergency assistance, move the employee to a cool shaded area and fan the body and even go on and try to cool the worker by soaking them, perhaps spraying them, sponging, or showering them with water. Of course, the best thing would be to prevent this kind of serious situation. What are the recommendations to do that? You're right about that, Fred. The thing we want to do is prevent this kind of situation. So farm owners and supervisors should manage the employee working conditions where the heat stress might occur. And I'll give you some ideas. First, as I mentioned earlier, maybe try to acclimatize those newer farm employees to hot working and weather conditions by exposing them perhaps for progressively longer periods. Uh, when it's possible, schedule those, those physical labor, what I'll call the hot jobs for the cooler part of the day, the morning, uh, where where preventive maintenance on things, uh, repair jobs might occur in hot areas. Uh, maybe 
try to schedule those in the first place for those taking place in cooler months. But again, early morning or, or perhaps late at night might be a better time. Tasks that require physical exertion uh, during hot conditions, as I said, should be scheduled during a cooler part of the day or uh, if they need to be done when it's warm, provide more frequent than usual rest and cool off periods. Uh, assign extra employees to reduce the workload. That, that can also help. Those are all good ideas, Melissa. And I think when we think about, you know, certain jobs, you can also think about the cows too, right? So if it's hot, hot for yourself, it's probably going to be hot for those cows. So moving some of those tasks to early morning or later in the evening when it's cooler is probably a good idea. So uh. that, that's great, Jen. Um, just you make a really good point there. Uh, again, is where we so often think about our cows first and we should, but uh, because they don't know how to monitor themselves. But um, if you're thinking about the cows, be thinking about the people too. So what are some other ideas? Okay, a few other ideas to prevent heat related illness. As I said, providing workers with rest periods in cool or shaded areas and providing cool water or other liquids, lemonade, iced tea, things like that to your employees. Where enclosed areas are not air conditioned, provide adequate fans and ventilation to assure air movement. Uh, encourage employees to wear uh, light colored and loose fitting breathable clothing. And again, it might be something that an employer uh, could want to provide. Wear protective clothing or personal protective equipment is necessary. Additional monitoring should take place. It's really required as, as that kind of clothing can increase the risk of heat stress. And as I mentioned earlier, monitor those workers who might have some additional heat stress factors, the older workers, uh, workers who may appear to be overweight. Um, and again, ones that you just know, they're, they're just not accustomed to this kind of work. You want to uh, monitor them in, in a, with extra special attention. And of course, we always think about, you know, trying to get fluid consumption up any time of year. And it's probably more important during the hot summer months, but sometimes that can be kind of hard when you're working and you're, you know, you're, you're active and not really taking time to get that water in. So you have any recommendations for that? You're right, Jen. It's really important to provide fluids and encourage the employees to, to consume sufficient liquid so they don't become thirsty or dehydrated. So strategically, where people are working, uh, jugs, thermoses, bottles of water, you know, the, the big containers that have, have the spout with, with cups or providing uh, your workers with water bottles, perhaps that they can, they can wear on their hip. And, and you mentioned that, but, but I do want to note again today, yes, we're talking about heat, but it is important to remember that dehydration can occur in any weather conditions, uh, in, including very cold weather. So as you said, Jen, always consume adequate fluids year round. And, and one thing to think about is to always let employees know that they can take that bathroom break when they need to so that they don't have to say, well, I have to watch my fluids because I don't have chances for bathroom breaks. Those things go together. So just be aware of that. I want to circle back to the comment about wearing light, loose fitting clothes. You know, I'm a little older and wear long sleeve shirts, even in the hot. And there is some science that kind of supports, you know, having that moisture, you know, in those sleeves and in those shoulders helps when the wind hits it and you get some evaporating cooling. Or is that an old wives tale? No, no, that isn't, Fred. Um, and and I'm, I'm glad you circled back to that. Yeah, there are times that can that long sleeve shirt, as long as it's a loose fitting light fabric can be very, very effective. And too, if somebody's out in the sun, that can also give them a little bit of sun protection as well. So no, not an old wives tale at all. And, and again, to make sure somebody's not wearing a, a long sleeve shirt that's like a, a tightly woven uh, knit uh, or, you know, almost like a sweatshirt material. That's not what we want. We want that light colored, uh, loosely woven type of material. But that's a real good point. Thanks for coming back to that. Are there materials related to training of workers and supervisors out there that be useful for dairy? 
Yes, yes. And, you know, in, in human resource management, uh, training on the dairy farm in so many aspects is very important, including all kinds of safety and health training. So I recommend always that there are plans for ongoing training for our dairy workers. It's a, a good motivator. It's just good for the dairy farm all along, but you want that for the workers and that additional awareness for your supervisors as well. So topics should include heat stress risks, heat illness prevention, employee and self-monitoring in hot weather conditions. And when I talk about training, sometimes our, our farm owners and operators think we're talking about some kind of a, an elaborate formal training program. It doesn't have to be that difficult. I very often talk about what I call the five-minute stand-up talk. Uh, hey, everybody, gather around. Give everybody something to drink, a drink of water, a, a snack. The workers gather in and say, hey, we're going to take five minutes to talk about. And uh, we say, you know, in this five minutes, let's spend some time talking about how to prevent and monitor the possibility of heat stress and how we can be watching out for one another and perhaps save one another's lives. So like I said, that five minute stand up talk can be very effective. It helps to put those topics, uh, this topic we're talking about today or other safety topics as a kind of a top of mind reminder and people just become more conscious of it. Good practice all the way around. Are there other ways to raise awareness? Well, I like posters and, and these can be small posters, big posters that you can buy, but posters are just a, another great way to remind workers of how to prevent heat related illness. Now on the OSHA website that I'll give you that link to later, uh, they have posters that can easily be printed on just even eight and a half by 11 inch paper, but then you display them in multiple locations uh, around the farm, in the bathrooms, uh, in the break areas, but just, you know, on a, on a post or whatever. They also on the OSHA site have a really easily printable heat stress card. It's like a handheld card. Uh, you can hand that out to everybody. That's something you could do in a stand up talk. Uh, print those cards, give them to everybody. And the one thing uh, I want to remind everybody of is that these posters, these uh, cards, a lot of other information, it's not available only in English. Uh, it's available in Spanish and some other languages. And then there are what they call low tech, low literacy resources. And these are posters and information that have less, um, I'll say less print, less words on them, maybe just a few keywords and more illustrations uh, showing people people consuming fluids and maybe getting in the shade or wearing a hat or things like that. Those are great resources, Melissa. And you mentioned low tech uh, resources. How about high tech resources? Maybe somebody that you know, gets all their information on their cell phone. You bet. And of course, we've seen that more and more over the years. People having their, their cell phone with them all the time. So OSHA has been conscious of that. And OSHA has a free mobile phone heat app. Uh, it allows workers and supervisors to calculate the worksite heat index. It explains what the heat in index is. And workers can receive reminders about protective measures that should be taken to protect themselves and their co-workers from heat-related illnesses. Things, again, like drinking enough fluids, scheduling a rest break, planning for and knowing what to do in an emergency, uh, adjusting your work operations, gradually building up a workload for new workers, training on heat illness signs and symptoms, monitoring one another for signs and symptoms of heat-related stress or illness. Great resource. I might have to download that app. I didn't know that was out there. All right. Good, good. Um, so again, can you recap all these resources? I know you mentioned there might be a link that we can direct our audience to. Go ahead and uh, share those out. You bet. Um, the best place, as I indicated, to start on many of these things I've talked about today is on the OSHA website. And that web address is a very easy one. You just go to OSHA.gov forward slash heat. OSHA.gov forward slash heat. And there you'll find all the information about their heat illness prevention program that they sum up in three words, water, rest, shade. 
So again, that's OSHA.gov forward slash heat, and you'll find links to the publications, the posters, the cards for the workers, and more. And as I mentioned earlier, for more information, you can look on the ISU Ag Decision Maker website, which again, you can always just Google Ag Decision Maker, or you can go to extension.iastate.edu forward slash agdm. And in the human resources section, you'll find a fact sheet on protecting your farm workers from heat stress. It contains the OSHA links, plus links to more research-based resources, videos, and more. That all sounds great, Melissa. Um, I'll also include all those links with this recorded podcast. So if somebody uh, clicks on this podcast, they should be able to see some of these links as well. So I appreciate you giving all these resources here today, Melissa. Very good. And and I've enjoyed being with you today. Uh, always good to see or, or to talk to you and Fred and very much appreciate being part of our Extension Dairy Team. We sure appreciate the information you bring to us. And we look forward to a safer summer uh, as we now have gained a little of the information about heat stress on our dairies. All right. Thanks again. And hope everybody stays cool and enjoys their summer. So thanks again for joining us today and look forward to visiting with you on the next Dairy News and Views from ISU. This institution is an equal opportunity provider. For the full non-discrimination statements or combination inquiries, go to www dot extension dot ia state dot edu backslash diversity backslash ext